just arrived at the workshop right now. Um, good timing because um, the electrician has just arrived this second as well, about four seconds after we pulled up. We'll hopefully mill something today, but it certainly won't be um, it certainly won't be right now because the electrician's going to be here, got a couple of things to do, going to be wiring in uh, this here. This is, you know, a socket and isolator going to the milling machine. The plan is to have two, the two tumblers there, the, the American centrifugal one and the German vibratory one there. And so these two sockets here are what's going to do that. Right, my apologies, it is loud out here, but we have just been and bought this. This is something fantastically unexciting. What it is, is, with the lights to adjust, there we go. Um, down here, if we go down to the milling machine, it's not a fully enclosed, it's not a full CNC milling machine. You can see it's very, it's very, very open. Because I am going to be machining, 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 milling, machining, machining. Because I'm going to be machining titanium mostly. I'm just testing on aluminium. I doubt I'll do much aluminium. It needs lots and lots of coolant. It, you know, it gets hot. It's basically you can't mill titanium without coolant. And so the coolant is going to go everywhere. It's going to go all over the floor down there. So what we want to do is we want to sort of protect the concrete floor it's a rented building we want to keep things clean keep things good so that roll of lino linoleum vinyl whatever is going to go underneath the machine that's the plan it will be interesting to see if it works Right halfway through, look at that. Concrete, linoleum, concrete, linoleum. It's a, uh, it's a uh, weirdly enough, I think it's got that sort of pebble dash. It looks like concrete, it looks like that sort of mixed stone effect concrete. Um, it's even got like fake cracks in it, I think. Or maybe, I don't know. Uh, but it's looking good, like, I think that should sort of cover up a multitude of sins that this machine here is gonna make. Things sometimes work well in theory, like putting vinyl down on the floor, but in practice, things can kinda go wrong. The pallet truck, pallet jack, whatever we call it, is kind of bunched up a bit, but the problem's now twofold because, um, Something's gone wrong with the pallet jack truck thing and it won't lift up anymore. So we're kind of we're kind of stuck there for a while. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting. Time for a question or two from from the YouTube comments. What is a pocket? Now that refers to the what do you call it? Um <laughs> the milling I was doing yesterday. And if you look at this here. So that there is what's called a pocket. It can be uh, it can be rectangular, square, circular, triangle, a random shape. It's it's cutting out of essentially like a hole out of metal, kind of like the hole in a kind of like the hole in your sink, like your kitchen sink. You know that kind of that kind of cut. I think as far as I know, and you know I don't know that much about milling. I don't know anything about milling really. That's a pocket. What grade titanium do you typically use? I only ever use grade five. The other grades, basically, um, they don't have the, the strength, the elasticity, that kind of thing. It needs to be grade five, which is 6AL4V, which is 6% aluminium in with it, and I think 4% vanadium, I believe, something like that anyway.
You know, it's funny, on the uh, drive over here this morning, hour and a half drive, because there was traffic, I was thinking of like, what should I make, what should I make? Um, on here today, you know, just, just out of um, aluminium. And I thought, oh, I think I could make a spinner. If I, if I milled this and I clamped it the other way and I made a little clamp and do that, I was planning the whole day. It is now, what's the time? 12 minutes past four, precisely. And like, we've only just got it fired up. Um, oh, put the coolant tray on the bottom. This wasn't here before. So we're gonna try testing the coolant, see if we can sort of get it flooding in, coming down, and you know, hopefully splashing all over the nice new uh, vinyl flooring we just put in. Another time delay, I forgot that the toolbox that I ordered, that is similar to this one, that came in yesterday, so I'm gonna go and pick that up right now. I think we need to cut something now, I really do. You will notice I never actually used coolant after all. Two reasons for that. One is that I couldn't get it to work. It would turn on the mist. The software would turn on the mist, but not the coolant. I'm not sure if I was doing something wrong or if I'm missing something. But at the same time, while I was trying to sort out that problem, my machinist called me because I told him earlier about like how this whole place was full of um, uh, mist the other day. So he phoned me up to say, hey, look, instead of sucking like the coolant out of a, because the way the coolant works is it blasts air, but it works with a venturi effect, I think, and as the air goes past like a jug, there's a pipe, I'm not explaining this very well, there's basically, basically air blasts on, but there's also a hose connected in a jug, and that sort of sucks up a bit of fluid as well. Now I had coolant with 20 to one water, so 20 parts water to one part, coolant sort of oil or fluid in there, uh, which is what you use for the flood, but he said no, just go straight, to oil, you know, and it's, it's sort of thicker and it shouldn't spray everywhere. And so we thought we'd try that. And, you know, we just cut a little hole and yeah, I mean, it seemed to work okay. Um, doesn't look 
like there's much cooling in here but the thing is the doors open so maybe all escaped spent a little bit more time messing around with the software just instead of just doing pockets I'm trying to sort of start programming it to sort of come down and do the movements I want um, quickly finding that the conversational um, software like the software without going into too much detail um, you know you can you can hard code a milling machine which is like telling it you know x goes here y goes there z goes there then it goes x goes here z goes there y goes there whatever like and it moves around very slow very tedious uh, some people do that then there's like the other end of the extreme which is computer aided machining software i think which is basically takes a 3d part and sort of turns it into code into that g code that can be used on the, the milling machine but it's not as simple as just going clicking a button the, you know you've got to select tools how it does it feed rates fixturing just a whole bunch of stuff that's um like i know nothing about yet i just know that there's a lot <laughs> in in that but conversational milling is a little bit different it's it's kind of like uh, you can sort of say, hey, draw a circle like this and then go down a bit and draw another circle and you don't have to hard code everything with G-code and it's not massively involved like sort of cam software. Um, I will cover that another day for sure. So I'm just sort of seeing that there's, you know, there's quite a lot of limits in that, you know, unless you sit and spend time and you've got to program every single line. So conversational is good, but I have a feeling I will sort of go past it soon as I sort of learn about the machine. Now, I will leave it at that for today i think it is friday i will leave you with a quote of course it is by thomas edison and he said opportunity is missed by most people because it is dressed in overalls and looks like work <laughs>